but I'm sure you guys know better about the excuses than well, me because you have the experience. Yeah, well, that seems very generous of you. So just to recap quickly, we've got uh, Vitor and Maria Costa of Portugal Door here, starting out helping people buy a home in northern Portugal and Maria helping people to learn Portuguese. And we began talking about the barriers to that. And we can, I mean, it'd be great to hear from, from all parts of the conversation tonight on what's difficult about it from the expat point of view and how you can help Maria with the solution side. But you very generously said there, the excuses you hear are the ones you make yourself in your daily life, starting with yes. not having the time to do that. So I guess that's sort of lesson number one. We do have to make a priority of it, don't we, and set some time aside. How have, how have you dealt with that specifically? And what's your method? Do you do an online uh, class and session each week? How, how does it work with people when you're teaching them? So uh, I mainly focus on conversational Portuguese. Right. And I like to... <clears throat> adapt to people's needs so for example if people want just to talk for one hour and have some feedback and maybe some motivation like okay this is not how you do it you can say it this way um we can have that some people really like to know the details and the grammar then i adapt and i i do that more instead of just talking some people like to write some like to listen mm -hmm. um I also, I have one-to-ones, but I also have groups, especially lately friends that just want to have a tea and a coffee and speak Portuguese. That's actually a great way to learn. Um, yes, so I adapt to what people need. Great. Okay, so um, kind of bespoke or user-led, if you like. Um, in terms of <laughs> keeping people engaged, presumably, because they're learning what they want and need to learn rather than being overfaced and undermined by a massive <laughs> grammatical rule book or conjugating <laughs> verbs yeah, that they might never... Usually never... people actually run away from that. That's the uh, first thing yes. people say. Look, I just want to know how to talk. I don't want grammar. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, after one or two sessions, the word verb or adjective appears yeah, yeah. out of nowhere. So yeah. we cannot really run away, yeah. but but we can adapt and do it in a more natural way. Also yes. because when learning a language, and I think Victor keeps saying that, so I'm probably repeating what he said, but when you learn a language, you need to learn the culture. Yes, It's that's... not like you can just literally translate everything. Yeah, You actually need to know, okay, you can say that it will sound a little bit weird. So this is the most natural way to say it. Mm -hmm. And that's also a very important part of knowing how to say, for example, in the north of Portugal, yes, we speak a little bit different. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. So, yes. A mm, bit more swearing, I've heard. But you don't mean that, do you? I never swear, so I will never teach that part if she That's swears it. i call my mom and ask to spend over the night there <laughs> <laughs> okay great i'm glad to hear that that'll be a, a great reassurance for some people okay so that's wonderful so your classes are conversational um what people would like to learn what's going to be useful to them because that's really you know they can apply it that, that's really helpful yes, and, and that's useful. also the fun part it's like yeah. for example i teach an expression that comes up naturally Yes. In the conversation. Oh, we actually say this. Yeah. For example, we have an expression, nunca pior, mm -hmm. never worse. And it's not, so, I think it's a very Portuguese thing. And I noticed that we are very depressing people, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So all the expressions we have, so we are content with life. Doesn't matter if everything is okay or if the world is falling apart, we always have an expression to say, we are okay, everything is okay, life goes on. So, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, I have lots of fun. Which is what Vito's saying about the culture, right? You're, you're getting an insight into the national psychology when you hear um, the two, I guess there's a spectrum. It's start, if you're having a really good day, you would respond maybe, menos, you know, more or less, it's okay. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a good day, isn't it? And then on a bad day, it's what? Nunca piad, what did you say? Uh, nunca. Yeah. Piard. Piard. Nunca piard. Nunca okay. Piard. okay yeah. Good to know. 
All right. Um, brilliant. Any other questions then, uh, Portugal Club members, masterminders? What would what would you like? I mean, Steve probably wants to know all about real estate um, lingo, which would be quite useful. That would be your good application, wouldn't it, Steve? Use case? Yeah, I think um, something I've been trying to do is learn better Portuguese and try and understand um, of the people that I'm dealing with. Um, so I think over time, the conversational Portuguese will be beneficial because I'm always trying to work with locals and not just foreigners as well. Um, but I need to work with local people to get a better understanding of what kind of market am I getting involved in. Yeah. Okay. And that, that's, that's a way that you might work, for example, with Steve there, Maria. You could do uh, property and real estate and and uh, redevelopment based conversation with Steve, for example. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. That, that's, yeah. right. For example, ca casa germinada. Do you know what that means? No. So if you, if you translate it, it would be something like a sprouted house. Yeah. Because German germinar that. is a botanical term that means to sprout, right? Like, yeah. uh, when you plant a seed and it starts sprouting and all of that. But in reality, what people meant is casa geminada, which comes from Gemini, which means twin. So yeah. a lot of people, including real estate agents, will type casa germinada, where if you do a translation, it will sound very, very weird. Yes. So yeah. you don't only have to understand the culture and the language, but you also do well in knowing the common errors that portuguese people make that can make things very confusing yes yeah but and they do don't they this is this is what we realize all the uh, time all the yeah. time there is a uh, portuguese there's a page on facebook called uh agent funini the funini agent that constantly posts about you know less desirable things that are seen on the real estate area and you see a lot of stuff like that right excellent i want to ask you about time scale as well um one of one of the things i'm picking up asking people about you know what, what's gone wrong with learning portuguese is there seems to be no end to it you know people embark on the a2 or hear about the a2 course which is two nights a week for nine months um which seems like a really big commitment and is of course um and that seems like a, a too big a commitment for some people who just want to learn how to speak uh, and have a conversation and, and 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 grow their confidence how do you time scale that maria do you say like by a certain time you know you're going to be able to do x y or z because i think that psychologically would help people to get them to a, a like a milestone of their portuguese communication rather than it's like it goes on and on and on and on does that does that sound fair to you that people do get overwhelmed by it never ending yeah, I think it depends on on each each person's goals because there are people that really want to practice every day. And by at this point, for example, I have a student that I just go there and she just tells me, I want to talk to you. And she speaks Portuguese and I I correct here and there, mm -hmm. but she's already advanced, so she just wants to have someone to speak Portuguese with. Yeah. Yeah. For example, okay. um, so that one, I hope it never ends because uh, <laughs> I'm just having a good conversation and learning with her. So that's nice. Yes. Um, but yes, um, that is that is a problem, I guess, with um, with those courses. They do have a purpose because you have usually a certificate at the end and that's yeah. useful. Yeah. But if you really want to learn a language, uh, what I think is that if you have a teacher it's a resource mm -hmm. but you really have to use the teacher yes and let the teacher know what to, what do you want what are your expectations and you yourself need to have that goal for you yes. okay yeah. i want to learn this by this time yeah yeah because everyone is always available to help you but you also need to know what what you really want by when yeah because we are always here to help, right? Yes, definitely. So, so yes, um, what I usually do is I have uh, I cr create the courses for each team or person. Yeah. And we have the goals, and 
I follow the course, so they know that in four sessions, they will know this. They know that in eight sessions, they will know that. So, and then we always change and evolve as they want, of course. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Um, Joao de Nort, John and Christina, do you, would you care to, uh, to, I mean, just for the sake of uh, understanding what people's needs are, do you, do you have a what, by, when, or some sense of breaking the language, or not the language, but your requirements of this, of the language down into what you'd like to know and by and how quickly? Can I start with you, John, John Heimbach? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know so much about that. I was just thinking of the number of different courses that I had presented to me here, um, some paid, some free. I'm starting one this next Saturday, but um, it's one, one of those things where we have obligations that come up where, uh, you know, I have a brother coming into town that I'll spend some time with that we have to go back to the States in, in, uh, in July. So, you know, these things that last for nine months, um, it really makes it hard to fit into your other obligations and things. Mm. Um, I was thinking back at university days, you know, you had courses that you signed up for that were, you know, you signed up for a, a, a course that would end in a quarter or in three months. Or if you were on a semester system, it would end in, uh, you know, in four months or, um, or four or five months. But nothing would last for nine months. Um, so that's that you know that would be uh, unusual even for university coursework. Um, I don't know if it's that way in, in Portugal, but Maria and and Vitor, when you were in university uh, and you and you signed up for a course, uh, how long would it typically take? Way too long, longer <laughs> than it had to be. <laughs> but like yes. I, yeah, good answer. Well, we have two semesters, so six months. Yeah. Or four or five each. Yeah. Like to give an yeah. idea, like two years of Russian. Oh, bloody well. We just kind of know the basics. Yeah. We know how to read and write, but that's about it. Wow. Okay, John. John, what was your what would be your preferred outcome? You know, where do you want to get to? Because what I see happening is in the in, in being overwhelmed by a really big target and the, the scheduling problem you're talking of, of nine months, people end up doing nothing at all. And the, and the, and the weeks and years roll by and the, nothing happens, which is a real shame because we, we're, we are living in the culture where you could learn to speak and engage given the right tools and opportunities. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's as though if I'm not going to do A2, um, I'm not going to do anything at all. And then people who do the A2s sometimes do nothing at all after that. They don't even speak Portuguese after they've done an A2 course, which is really strange. But so, so what would be your your preferred uh, out? What level would you want to get to? <laughs> Say again. A, I might have to talk with Maria and uh, and do something with her um, because you know, with more of an approach perhaps towards conversational, I think that's uh, that would be my my goal is. Yeah is situational Portuguese, yes. you know, conversation in the restaurant, the supermarket, uh, you know, when uh, traveling, um, the train station or, uh, or having a holiday, you know, just, you know, what are the situations that you find yourself in? Yeah. Okay. So conversational situations got that. Thank you very much. Um, the brands, interestingly, a household made of uh, marketing uh, brain and education brain. So mm -hmm. you both would have some input, I think, useful input on this as well. And of course, your own experience of trying to learn Portuguese in, over here, which didn't seem to go terribly well, if, if I'm not giving too much of a, a confidence away. Right. But yeah, I think so, both with academic backgrounds, learning objectives. What is your learning objective? <laughs> <laughs> So for I'll speak for me. Joan has a different learning objective. Um, I'm still working. Um, and so to me, time really is a challenge because I'm still working and trying to do a, a bunch of other things. But I'd say for me, like in three months, being more comfortable, having some basic conversational skills, because I did take a one. So I have an understanding, but I haven't utilized it too much. And it's not geared towards conversation. 
Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm trying to start conversations when we go out to eat, when we meet people, because we like going to like pubs or social places where we can have a conversation and say a little bit about ourselves, ask people questions about themselves and what they like, yep. what they don't like to do. So basic um, conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and again, so not just going out, but, it, you know, if you're going someplace, you stuck, you need to ask for help or if you're, you know, shopping or something like that. Yeah, very good. Thank you. That's really useful. So yeah. three, three, a kind of three month time frame, basic conversation and being more comfortable, possibly slash confident in, in having those conversations. Yeah. 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 Okay. Great. Thank you. What about you, John Brown? I'm just... We both started at the same time when we got here and um, I had a problem with the tutor because she was she, she was teaching us Portuguese, obviously, but she was uh, from Angola and she hated Portugal. It's not a good start, is it? Not a good yeah. start. No. It was a challenge. the part about culture, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 I had to stop. They, they, they were nine of us started. And there were only Christina and one other left. One other person left at the end of the course. All she did was uh, they, what they they made me come here. It was just oh, it was like she was very to, negative. Um, yeah, a, a prison guard at Auschwitz. I have to do it in German. It was just horrible. So, but I've signed up, and um, it's it's basic. It's online, uh, and I'm actually going to start again when we get back from uh, we're going to uh, to the USA, states. In, yeah. Um, next month so no in two weeks oh two weeks it's now april this month oh. yeah <laughs> but you have signed up for an online course did you say john yes yeah. yeah and can i ask what what's the learning objective what's time the time frame what are you looking at with that uh, uh, well, uh, just that i become not trapped as a foreigner yeah i and need to i need to communicate properly so this one's on demand and self-paced okay yeah Right. And let's begin there. I think I've discussed with you um, to a little bit. I want to, I write poetry in English. I want to start learning, I want to write poetry in Portuguese as well. Oh, very good. For, for that, pro, that um, project I've got, which includes doing both. So yeah. I'm hoping by this time next year, and this might be um, overly except expected but i want to be fairly much fluent over the next year yeah right. in conversation yeah in, yeah yeah i don't want to be able to discuss net knitting patterns i don't need that yeah. but just <laughs> speaking to people about ordinary things um in in an acceptable non-pigeon portuguese so. And and you've got a head start on Angolan Portuguese relationships as well from a cultural yeah. point of view. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So people still having problems integrating after decades. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. 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 Well, that's really helpful. Thank you. No, no, I don't think and no, if you've got anything to add, I'm sure you speak to a lot of foreigners who say how hard it is or all their excuses for not doing it. What I need to, what I have to to add now, is just, just this. Give me just a quick moment. <laughs> are you are you listening? Yes. It's painful. It's Benfica Stadium. Noise, only noise. And is I that what we hear? I live with this. <laughs> the nightmare. The nightmare of the sound yes. of Benfica. I'm so yes. sorry, Lily. I yes. hope that instead of a nightmare, I'll. I experience a, a dream today. Are so. you moving closer to sporting then? Uh, I, am I moving too? Closer to sporting, to Avalad. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. no. Right. My heart is there. I not need. To, I don't need to leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that that's definitely a football fan group. If if <laughs> if there was if there was a conversational group built around football. With the right sort of tutor, that would again that would be very engaging, and it's the same thing you were talking about before. I think Maria is when people talk about something they're interested in, it just makes a world of difference, doesn't it? To just abstract the driest sort of teaching is just painful yeah. for people, especially if you're not a kid anymore. If you don't have to do it and sit in front of a teacher 
and have you know old school didactic teaching because you have to be there otherwise you're a truant you know if you don't have to do it you probably won't will you to be fair yeah, but you mentioned something uh, that is key to me that is you asked you you said especially if you are not a kid anymore yes the key is being a kid yes on the other hand yes okay. yeah. having a, what, a child mind and openness to, to it feed, feed the child the inner yes. child <laughs> okay yeah. all right and and the child as in the the being who hasn't who's happy to make mistakes and learn and see mistakes as being part of the yeah. learning process rather than an adult who beats himself up every time they get the wrong uh, pronunciation or whatever yeah <laughs> yes well and that happens that happens for sure doesn't it yeah okay so and that comes back to learning psychology i think so thanks guys for that um vito and maria i don't know if you want to add any more to your style and approach and respond to what you've heard um, there is one thing i want to add and then you can go it's quick but when you mentioned you know a lot of people that came here into the country and are having trouble with the language i actually yeah. had um, a meeting with uh, a mandarin coach one time <laughs> and she said that, you know, Chinese is probably a more drastic example because the culture and the language is so much different, right? Yeah. But trying to learn a language by just going into the country, it's like learning how to swim by jumping into the ocean, mm -hmm. right? And often people are in such a panic that they feel that they're drowning. There's so much going on at once that it can be difficult to stay calm and concentrate to, so that you can start learning how to actually do it. Very interesting, because I've had it that the people who learn are the ones who do get in a, on a kitchen or a building site, and they just have to. But I guess that's traumatic as well, isn't it, as you're su suggesting there? Of course. There. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yes. In the end, it, it depends of um, each of us. And yeah. I always uh, use this uh, this example, which, which is James, James Holly or yeah. Banana Slug. Yes. Uh, and he do an amazing job learning Portuguese. And he is very worried with all the details and the tone. Sometimes I realize that Portuguese words have, have, different, have different tones just because he's uh, asking me yeah. things about the two words. Because for me, I'm so used to talk Portuguese that I don't make I don't see any difference yeah so he does a, an amazing job learning Portuguese yeah yeah okay we'll bring him in at some point for sure he's available every Monday morning um excellent all right well thanks folks uh Maria I think last word to you um as our guest of honor tonight wow um <laughs> well a, a couple of things came to my mind so yeah. Hearing you all, uh, those are indeed the topics that most people come also to me saying, I need to, to learn about this, this and this. Everything you said is what most people want to, to learn too. Uh -huh. So that's good. Um, <laughs> another that's important cool. thing, something. Okay, okay thank you. Something. Um, another important thing, and a fun thing about having a group is that since you are not alone and you are all in the same page, you don't feel so afraid of making mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you are in a good group and not with someone that hates Portuguese. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Today we will learn how to go to the restaurant yes. and your challenge, your homework would be go to the restaurant and apply it. And then come back and tell us how it went. Yeah. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it doesn't go well, but you have the experience, and that's really the only way that you, you learn. Nothing teaches like trauma. That's right. Yeah, you just gotta get the right level. You've got to get the right level of it, haven't you? That is life, isn't it? No question. That is yeah. life, but you don't want to be over traumatized um, in a situation from your then you're having therapy from James Holly as well as language lessons. <laughs> All right, brilliant. And, and, the, and the third point, sorry, just to finish, is uh, listening to Portuguese. Mm -hmm. uh, because even if you don't know how to say any word in Portuguese, if you if you listen to it enough, you will start noticing the tones mm -hmm. that no one was talking about. Mm -hmm. And 
even people that already know Portuguese, sometimes we, we create habits of speaking in a certain way that then Portuguese people don't understand because the sounds are different. Like at the end of the word, when, when there is an O, we say U, yeah. like favor, favorite, fa, favorito. Yes. But when you say favorito, we, we don't understand because we are not thinking the same way. Yeah. So sometimes even you might know all the words, but pronunciation and listening is really important. Yes. And that's the first thing. And that's free. If you, if you find something good to listen to, usually people don't, don't like uh, TV, um, TV shows from TVI or SIC, those Portuguese channels, which yeah. I understand. <laughs> but if you find a good one and a person you like to listen to, I would say go for it. Excellent. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for being here. We can leave it there tonight because um, that's been really helpful.